For the past seven weeks here on a Sunday morning, we have been focusing on going for growth, believing very much that God's heart for us as a church and for us as individuals is that 2024 would be a year of growth. And we have been talking about growing in our discipleship, growing in our becoming more like Jesus, growing in our following of Jesus. And we have talked about growing in our relationship with God, growing in our relationship with others. We've been talking about growing in our serving, growing in our giving, growing in our giftings. Last week, Kelly, our youth pastor, brought a great message about growing in our going. And today, as I conclude this series of messages. I want to continue a little bit from where Kelly left us in terms of we go with the gospel because of the compassion in the heart of God. Uh, I want to talk today about growing in kindness. I really feel in terms of going with the gospel that kindness is a key factor and something that is really important to God uh, and I think really should be important to us in our daily living. In the book of Micah, in the Old Testament, chapter 6 and verse 8, it says these words, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what is it? What does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. In this verse, the prophet highlights three things that he says God requires of us. Number one, we act justly. Number two, we love mercy. And number three, we walk humbly with our God. I want to tell you, friends, that's something to attain to. I, I, I really hope that's something we might endeavor to attain to, acting justly, loving mercy, and walking humbly with our God. Now then, when it comes to that phrase, loving mercy, the actual Hebrew word that is used there is the word chesed. And chesed actually means kindness. And so the translation mercy is, is, is usable in that situation, but the actual word is kindness. And there are quite a number of Bible translations that actually use the word kindness. In the English Standard Version, it says, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. I love the Amplified translation and how it puts it, and it reads like this. It's there on the screen. He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you except to be just and to love and to diligently practice kindness or compassion picking up on last week, and to walk humbly with your God, setting aside any overblown sense of importance or self-righteousness. And so there it is. What does God want from us? To act justly, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. God requires of us, church, that we love kindness, that we practice kindness, that our lives are marked by kindness. Amen. I'm sure that we have all been on the receiving end of other people's kindness. The people in the nine o'clock service this morning were very kind to me because not one of them fell asleep during my sermon. <laughs> They were very kind. They listened to what I had to say. And some of you are being really kind right now in smiling and, and listening. It won't last for long, but there we go. It'll, it'll be here for a bit. But you know what? We would all know that the kindness of others expressed to us in our lives has made a difference, does make a difference. It's a dark day. And that little phone call, or that little word, or that smile, brings a ray of light into that darkness. The 
kindness of, of, of someone when we are down. And, and, and they called and they sent a message and it made a difference. We were, we were lifted by that demonstration, by that expression of, of kindness. I think we all know that kindness is a very powerful and impacting force. Someone has said it has the power to brighten even the darkest day. And I think we all know about that, don't we? Anybody uh, get some of that? It really does have that difference. It's also said of kindness that kindness is a language the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Kindness is something that can be spoken whatever our human language is as well. And I really feel that kindness is a language we want to speak more and more. A language that we as a church want to speak more and more. A language that we as individuals want to speak more and more. Is there an amen to that? Amen. Do you know, I'm really grateful that from an early age, I experienced the kindness of God through the kindness of God's people. Many of you will know I wasn't brought up in a Christian home. But one of the best things my parents ever did for me was to send me to Sunday school. And in Sunday school, I heard the stories of Jesus. I encountered the love of God. But I also had some wonderful Sunday school teachers. And many of you will have heard me say this before, but forgive me for saying it again. But it warrants saying, I, I don't remember a lot of the stuff that those Sunday school teachers told me. But what I do remember is how kind they were to me. I remember their kindness. And friends, the statement that kindness can leave a lasting impression long after the words have faded away is extremely true. The words have gone, but the impression that that kindness had upon my life is still there. As a youngster, I began attending the Elim Church in Porth. And one of the things that stands out from my early days at that church is the kindness of God's people towards me. They took an interest in my life. They would give me lifts home. People would pick me up to take me to the meetings. People would take me home for supper. They were so kind, so kind. And one of the great things about the family of God is that it's a great place to experience the kindness of God. And I thank God that in this room there is a kindness in the hearts of the people of God. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking about growing in our serve. Do you remember it? No, you don't. <laughs> I was talking about growing in our serve. And I mentioned how that very week I had been in the home of a husband and wife who every week make Welsh cakes for a homeless ministry. And uh, I was just impressed by that. And I mentioned that. Somebody went home from that service and over the last couple of weeks felt really stirred. And they came to me this morning at the door and they said this. I don't know who those people are, but I want to invest in what they're doing. Amen. And here is an envelope with cash. That's kindness. That's kindness. And let me just say before we all get worried, Kindness is not always measured in cash, all right? So I'm not hinting or saying anything like that. Kindness is measured in lots of ways. But what a demonstration of kindness that should happen. And I really do thank God for the kindness that we, we, we find. Back to my early days in the Porth Elim Church, my in-laws were in that church and... They were very, very kind to me. Had they known I was going to become their son-in-law, <laughs> I'm not convinced they would have been quite as kind. But they were very kind to me. But they weren't only kind to me, they were kind to so many people. And our little church in Porth was a very interesting church. There is a little verse in the Bible that speaks about God's peculiar people. 
Well, we had a fair share of peculiar people. That's why I went there. I fitted in. One of the peculiar people who came to our church on a Sunday night was a man called Malcolm. Every Sunday night for a long time, he came to our church. He was a man of the road. In those days, we called them tramps. It's not politically correct to do that now, but that's what he was. And I'm not being unkind here, but when Malcolm walked in the room, you knew he was there. There was an aroma that came with him. And I'm not talking about Chanel or Paco Roban or something like that. There was an aroma. He stank. Every Sunday night, my in-laws would invite people home for supper. We had wonderful suppers with your mum and dad. And they would invite all sorts of people. And do you know who was invited? Malcolm. Malcolm was often invited to their home for supper. He didn't walk. He sat in their car. He sat at the table with everyone else. He ate his full. He never, ever went home empty-handed. He went home with bags full of food, clothes. They looked after him. They loved him. That was kindness. I observed that. I saw it. It was kindness manifest. And you know what? It touched my life. And as I looked at them, I thought, Lord, I want to be like them. I'd like kindness to be part of my life. I'd like it to be how I, I live. And I have to confess, it's something that I, I've tried to include. as part. I haven't always been successful. I haven't always got it right. But it's something that I've been, uh, aspired to and something that I would like to, 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 to demonstrate because I know its difference. And just as I am recalling those who were kind to me, I'm sure you can think of those who were kind to you. And those expressions of kindness that impacted your life, that maybe inspired your life to live with a measure of kindness. But you know what, friends? The greatest kindness that any of us can know is the kindness that comes from the heart of God. There is a kindness in the heart of God that is overwhelming. The, you know, the Bible often speaks of God's kindness towards his people. The Bible speaks of God's acts of kindness, but it doesn't just speak about his acts of kindness. It proclaims that he is kind. His acts of kindness are an overflow of his character and nature. God is kind. In Jeremiah 9, in verse 24, the prophet speaks there, and he's declaring what God says. And God himself in those verses declares, I'm kind. I want you to know that I am kind. Look at the verse, if someone wants to brag, then let them brag about this. Let them brag that they learn to know me. Let them brag that they understand that I am the Lord, that I am kind and fair, and that I do good things on earth. That's who he is. That's who he is. That's his nature. That's his character. It's at the core of who he is, and it's seen in his dealings with mankind. His heart, friends, is full of loving kindness towards us. We read in our opening psalm this morning about the loving kindness of our God. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for his loving kindness that is demonstrated and expressed and poured into our hearts and lives. When God recounted his dealing with the Israelites, he declared in Jeremiah 31 and verse 1, I have loved you with an everlasting love, and I have drawn you with loving kindness. That word there is the same word that Micah used, chesed, kindness. I've drawn you with kindness. In kindness, God reached out to those rebellious Israelites and drew them to himself, adopting them as his people, his very own possession. And do you know what, friends? As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, he's done the same to us. You see, it says in Romans 2 and verse 4 that it is his kindness that has brought us 
to a place of repentance. I'm a child of God today, not because of anything I've done, but because of what he's done. You're a child of God today because of what he's done. In his kindness, he reached out to us and he drew us to himself. And by his spirit, he's still doing that. And do you know what? This morning all over Swansea, God is reaching out in loving kindness, drawing people to himself. And not just in Swansea, but in Wales, even in England, (laughs) even in the nations of the world. We are his children today because of his loving kindness. It, It has brought us to repentance. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 7 is a lovely verse, and it speaks about the kindness that has been expressed to us in Jesus. If you take a couple of minutes to read through chapter 2 and the verses that surround verse 7, that is a reference to the sacrificial death of Christ upon the cross. It's a reference to the grace of that has saved us. The kindness that has been expressed in Jesus. The cross is an expression of the kindness of God. It's an expression of his love. It's an expression of his grace. It's an expression of his mercy. It shows us his heart. But the kindness of God is central in what Jesus did. You know, many of us in the room are in no doubt about the kindness of God because we've experienced it. That kindness has brought us to where we are. It has made us who we are as the children of God. And we thank God for his kindness. But friends, we're not bothered so much today about the kindness of God. I think the challenge is is our hearts, is our life. We're thinking about growing in kindness. Well, where are we at? What about the kindness in our hearts? Is it an area that we have grown in? Is it an area that we are growing in? Is it an area we want to grow in? That we feel we would need to grow in? One of the hallmarks of the life of Jesus was kindness. As Jesus ministered on this earth, he expressed and demonstrated kindness. He touched the lepers. He healed the sick. He fed the multitudes. He washed the dirty feet of his disciples. His kindness was evident in the way he dealt with people, in the words he used. There was expressed an incredible and wonderful kindness. In this series, our focus has been about becoming like Jesus becoming like him. Well, friends, when it comes to kindness, how are we doing? How are we doing? And again, please, I'm not pointing a finger. I'm asking a question that we all want to answer honestly. How are we doing? Is there a kindness evidenced in our lives? Is there a kindness that we are demonstrating in and through our lives? In Luke 6, Jesus referenced the kingdom of of God. And in these verses, he speaks of how in showing kindness, we will be identified as the children of God. You know, sometimes people uh, would look uh, at at my son, Reese, and they would say, well, we know where he comes from. We know who he is. They would look at Joe and think, we don't know where he's come from. (laughs) He's from Jill's side of the family. (laughs) But sometimes you see children who are like almost the image. And you know, friends, there's a call upon our lives to be the image of our dad, our heavenly dad. And kindness is one of the ways that we represent our heavenly father. You know... As believers, we have been shown the most amazing and 
costly act of kindness that this world has ever seen. We read in Titus chapter three, verses four to seven, these words. Would you like to read it with me? It says, but when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. When the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared. What's that talking about? It's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the very expression of the love and kindness of God. And when he appeared and walked this earth and did what he did and when he died that death, the kindness of God is revealed. And not only has the kindness of God been revealed, but it's been released into our lives. And friends, for us as believers now, the challenge is this, having had that kindness been received in our lives, having received that kindness, we now have to release that kindness We have to let it out, let it out. We are called to show kindness, called to show kindness. Ephesians chapter 4, 31 and 32, it's on the screen, read it with me again if you would. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Be kind. Be kind. Kindness is not an option for us as God's people. It doesn't say if you feel like it. It just says be kind. Be kind. It's not an emotion. It's not a feeling. Kindness is a choice. And I want to encourage us, make the right choice. Choose to live with kindness. Choose to express and demonstrate the kindness that God has shown to you, to others, for his glory. I think we would all agree with the statement that it's easy to be kind to those who are kind to us. But it's not so easy to be kind to those who are unkind to us. And I guess we've all faced the challenge of being kind to those who've been unkind to us. And it is a challenge, isn't it, Uzo? It's a challenge. I mean that. It is a challenge. And people say unkind things. When people do unkind things, it's a challenge to be kind to them. Friends, it's not easy, but it is not impossible. It's not impossible. You see, part of our growing in Christ-likeness is that we are kind to others even when they're not kind to us. Paul, the apostle, explains a little bit of how this contrasting behavior looks in our lives. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. When reviled, no, we revile others. (laughs) When we are reviled, we bless. We don't repay wrong for wrong. When we are reviled, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we speak kindly. We live differently. Some people can choose to walk on this level, but we choose to walk a higher path. We choose to walk on a different plane. Can I encourage you? Keep walking on the higher level. Don't sink to the depths. Don't sink to where other people might live. Live on that higher level. Live a different sort of, sort of life. We can do it because kindness is part of our new nature. Amen. 
If you are a believer, if you've been born again, if you have been regenerated by the Spirit of God, then kindness is part of your new nature. And like all parts of our new nature, it needs to be cultivated and developed. We need to allow it to grow. We need to let it out. Galatians 5.22 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Many of you will know these verses. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The people who belong to Jesus evidence these things in their lives. This fruit is produced in us by the Holy Spirit. And so the minute we become Christians, he starts to work in us, producing these evidences of his presence. And in increasing measure, these things should be seen in our lives. And one of them is kindness. Kindness. None of us are the finished article. We're all works in progress, all right? We're all works. But let's grow. Let's grow in these areas. And let's grow in kindness. And yes, although this is something the Holy Spirit produces, we have a part to play. We have a part to play. Colossians 3, verse 12. Read it with me. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Put on. Some of the translations say clothe yourself. Clothe yourself. Most of us, when we go to leave our houses in the morning, to go to work, school, college, university, go to shopping, usually put some clothes on. The vast majority of us do. If it's your choice not to, to that's fine, that's your business. But the vast majority will put something on. The scriptures exhort us to put some stuff on. And one of them is kindness. You know, in Swansea, one of the things I never leave home without is my umbrella. If you live in Swansea, never leave home without your umbrella. As Christians, one of the things we should never leave home without is kindness. Leave home with kindness. Make sure kindness is part of of your life. The message, a paraphrase, puts it like this, and I love it. So chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God has picked out for you. There are some clothes that God wants you to wear. And it goes on to say that kindness is one of those clothes. I want to encourage us, put on kindness. Put on kindness. Do you know what? It's a garment that should be always worn. And a garment that never goes out of fashion. It's always in fashion. I'm nearly finished. Thank you for your kindness in listening. The Bible says this as well about kindness. That it's not only those who are on the receiving end of kindness who benefit. The releaser of kindness, the giver of kindness also benefits. And there are a couple of verses, translations from uh, Proverbs 11, verse 17. Would you read them with me? A kind man benefits himself. When you're kind to others, you help yourself. Your own soul is nourished when you are kind. Kindness is good for you. Not just to be on the receiving end, but the giving end. When you are kind, it does you good. And you know what? The amazing thing is, research has proved this. Research has shown what God has said in his word is true. Listen to this. A variety of studies have noted that kindness stimulates the production of serotonin, which is associated with happiness. It produces endorphins, which are the body's natural painkiller. 
and reduced amounts of cortisone, the hormone associated with stress. Kindness also releases oxytocin, which helps lower blood pressure. And some studies found that participating in random acts of kindness for a month led to fewer symptoms of severe anxiety. Kindness and generosity led to reduced pain, increase of happiness, decreased stress, and decreased blood pressure. God knows what he's talking about when he tells us to be kind. Because it's good for us. It's good for us. Anybody got high blood pressure? You need to be more kind. <laughs> Keep taking the tablets as well, but be kind as well. Uh, I'm on blood pressure tablets too, so I need to be more kind. Bring my blood pressure down. <laughs> you know, there has been in recent times emphasis on sort of random acts of kindness. And those can be good. But friends, God doesn't just want us doing random acts. This is not about random acts of kindness. This is about a lifestyle living daily in a place of kindness. And I'm going to be kind to you right now by closing in the next two minutes. God doesn't want us just demonstrating random acts of kindness. He wants us to demonstrate the kindness that's in his heart, to reflect that. And so, friends, yeah, closing up, we want kindness, don't we, to be a hallmark of our lives. We want to be like him, more of him. We want it to be a hallmark of this house, and I really do thank God that kindness is a hallmark of this house. I thank God for the kindness of people who serve and minister. Do you know, in our baby bank, in 2023, we helped over a thousand people with nappies, and clothes, and prams, and all these ideas. Isn't that incredible? And that is due to the kindness of the people who give, the people who serve. In our food share, every week in our food share, 35 to 40 people come and take food. That's kindness. In I-58, Tanya and Brian do an amazing job. 80 to 90 people every week, yesterday, in the basement, being fed, being watered, being cared for. What's that about? It's kindness. It's kindness. The Welsh cakes. It's kindness. It's kindness. Do you know what, friends? Opportunities for kindness are all around us. They are. It was Seneca who said this, wherever there is a human being, there is an opportunity for kindness. Do we want to grow in kindness? Yeah? Yes. Take the opportunities. Today, today, before you leave the service, you have an opportunity to be kind to someone. Smile. Say hello. Ask them how they are. Let them know that you're going to pray for them this week. Yeah? Rather than leaving church with your normal, miserable, going home face. <laughs> and I'm prakash, I'm sorry I'm looking at you, but I, <laughs> I don't mean it personally. I really don't. That was terrible. Sometimes you say something and you're just staring at someone. Kindness. For some parts of the church, this period up to Easter is called Lent. And in some parts of the church, they, they will spend 40 days preparing for Easter by giving up something, giving up chocolate, giving up television, giving up alcohol, giving up this, that, and the other. We don't particularly follow the practice of Lent, and we don't like giving things up much, do we? <laughs> Certainly not chocolate. Never mind giving something up. Perhaps we could add something in this season. There are 34 days from now till Easter. 
I wonder in the next 34 days, could we make an effort in growing in kindness by, by every day looking for opportunities to express and demonstrate some kindness? It doesn't have to cost you money, although some expressions might. Don't be afraid to spend a fiver. It won't kill you. Send a text. Send a card. Make that phone call. Move from that side of the church to this side. And speak to someone from the other side. <laughs> when you're out shopping... Help that old lady across the road, even though she doesn't want to go across the road. Help her across the road. It's kind. <laughs> okay. Message received, yeah? Amen. Kindness. Yes. It's a virtue that stands out in a world of harshness and selfishness. It's an attractive quality, evident, not only in our faces, but especially in our words and actions. Darren, would you move the slide on for me? More importantly, kindness is an attribute that should be characterized in every believer because it's a reflection of Christ in us. Amen. And our whole goal is to become more like him. Would you stand with me? Father, thank you for your word. I thank you for the kindness of these people in listening. And Lord, I thank you for your kindness that has touched our lives. And I pray, Father God, that our lives having been touched by kindness, your kindness, our lives would reflect that kindness. Having received your kindness, our lives would release that kindness to others. Father, we want to be more like Jesus. Help us to evidence and demonstrate that kindness. I pray, Father, over these next 34 days that there will be a real flow of kindness in practical ways. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And friends, with all of this stuff that we've been talking about, it's about the heart, isn't it? It's not about the head. It's about the heart. And so, Lord, I pray, touch our hearts. Would you join me? Put your hand upon your heart this morning. Lord, touch my heart. Let it overflow with kindness. Kindness in my attitudes. Kindness in my words. Kindness in my deeds. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, let your word now do in us what you've sent it to do for your glory, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. Thank you, Lord.